Hello, you're watching VNews Bulletin. I'm um, from another headline session. Singaporean president pays a state visit to Vietnam. French businesses eye cooperation with Vietnamese partners. And later on, Vietnam was selected among 20 best places to visit in January by Wanderlust. Singaporean President Halima Yaakob and her spouse are in Vietnam for a state visit from October 16 to 20th. The visit is made at invitation of President Nguyễn Xuân Phúc. The state visit to Vietnam from October 16 to 20th by Singaporean President Halima Yaakob aims to elevate bilateral relations and further intensify the strategic partnership between two countries. The visit takes place when the two countries are looking forward to the 50th anniversary of their diplomatic relation and the 10th year of their strategic partnership in 2023. President Phuc warmly welcomed his Singaporean counterpart, emphasizing that the visit by Singapore's president is an important event, making more contributions to enhancing cooperation between two countries. He suggested that Singapore facilitate Vietnamese products access to its market, helping Vietnam participate more deeply in the global supply chain. President Halima Yaakov said she supports President Phuc's proposals during his state's visit to Singapore in February. Under the proposals, the two sides will coordinate to effectively implement seven areas of the Vietnam-Singapore Economic Connectivity Agreement and expand cooperation in innovation, digital economy and transformation along with developing the Vietnam-Singapore industrial parks into green and high-tech parks, making positive contributions to bilateral relations. Discussing regional and international issues, the two leaders reaffirmed ASEAN's consistent stance on the EC and the importance of maintaining peace, stability, security, safety and freedom of navigation and aviation in line with international law. After the talks, the two leaders witnessed the signing of a number of cooperation documents, including Memoranda of Understanding on Energy Cooperation, Cybersecurity, Cybercrime Prevention, and Technical Cooperation and Vocational Education and Training, among others. The same day, Party General Secretary Nguyễn Phu Chiao hosted a reception for Singapore President Halima Yaakob, who informed the Vietnamese leader of the results of her talks with President Nguyễn Xuân Phúc, noting that the two sides witnessed a number of memoranda of understanding on cooperation in many fields. She emphasized that strategic partnership between two countries has developed robustly, and Singapore always attaches importance to developing relations with Vietnam. Welcoming President Halima Yaakob and the high-level Singapore delegation, Party General Secretary Chiang affirmed that Vietnam attaches importance to strategic partnership with Singapore. He urged the two countries utilize their cooperation potential through enhancing the exchanges and contacts at all levels and in all channels, the party, government, national assembly and people. Also on October 17th, meeting Singapore President Halima Yaakob, Prime Minister Fat Ming-Ching suggested the two sides work closely to effectively implement the signed documents, contributing to boosting cooperation between two sides in renewable energy, cyber security, environment, education training and human resource development, along with digital economy and transformation, innovation and green economy. President Halima Yaakob agreed upon the Prime Minister's proposal on the need to encourage the development of the Vietnam-Singapore industrial parks in the direction of green, smart, high-tech and innovative industrial zones. She agreed to continue creating favorable conditions for the Vietnamese community to live, work and study in Singapore. Meeting Singaporean President Halima Yaakob, National Assembly Chairman Vung Ding Hui expressed his pleasure to welcome the Singaporean President, especially when the two countries are looking toward the 50th anniversary of their diplomatic relationship and the 10th year of their strategic partnership. 
Chairman Hui suggested that the National Assembly of Singapore support Vietnam's legislative body in the field of training. President Halima Yaakov said that the parliaments of Vietnam and Singapore have seen a close relationship over the past years. The two sides should enhance mutual understanding via people-to-people, -people, government, national assembly exchanges and at forums. Prime Minister Phan Minh Chi met Senator Tim Aris, Assistant Minister for Trade and Assistant Minister for Manufacturing of Australia in Hanoi on October 17th. Tim Aras is in Vietnam to co-chair the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development Southeast Asia Ministerial Forum 2022. Prime Minister Chin said the organization of the forum in the current context is necessary and timely. He held its theme connecting regions, partnerships for resilient and sustainable supply chains, saying that it's a concern and matches priorities and strengths of Vietnam and Australia. He suggests that Australia continue working closely with Vietnam while co-chairing the OECD Southeast Asia Regional Program. Iris, for his part, said Australia will continue working closely with Vietnam to co-chair the program and promote cooperation in OECD suggested by the Prime Minister. He said the Australian government always treasures strategic partnership with Vietnam and wants to tighten bilateral relationship. In his capacity, he vowed to further boost ties with Vietnam in the fields of economy, trade, investment, agriculture, education, training, culture, and labor. Also on October 17th, Prime Minister Phan Minh Ching hosted a reception for Minister President of the Government of the Federation Wallonia Brussels, Pierre Ives Jaholet. Prime Minister Ching said, the Vietnamese government always attaches importance to the development of friendship and multifaceted cooperation with Wallonia Brothers. He proposed that Belgium in general and Wallonia Brothers in particular facilitate Vietnamese agricultural products access to the Belgian market. He also suggested Belgium urge the European Commission to remove the IUU yellow card for Vietnamese seafood products. The Belgian minister president said, Belgium in general and Wallonia Brothers in particular always consider Vietnam to be its important and prioritized partner in the region. He spoke highly of Vietnam's efforts to contribute to maintaining peace, stability, and development in the region and in the world at large. During the meeting, the two sides agreed to increase visits by delegations at all levels, affirming to continue maintaining mutual support and multilateral fora actively contribute to solving regional and global issues. Many Vietnamese agricultural goods are on display at Cian Paris 2022, an international food trade show underway in Paris, France from October 15 to 19. The trade fair is being attended by more than 80 Vietnamese exhibitors, the largest number so far with products such as honey, pepper, cashew nut, vegetable, rice, and rice meat products. This year, Vietnamese exhibitors brought to the trade show more processed products rather than raw ones. They have focused more on qualities, packagings, and branding. Held annually, St. Paris is one of the world's largest and most prestigious trade fairs in food and beverage. This year, the event attracts about 7,000 exhibitors from 119 countries all around the world, which are putting some 400,000 products on display. It is expected to welcome around 310,000 visitors from around the world. Nearly 100 Vietnamese and French businesses were brought together at an economic forum recently held for the first time in the French seaport of Marseille. The gathering was co-organized by the As Marseille Province Chamber of Commerce and Industry at the Consulate General of Vietnam in Marseille. Participants discussed the prospects for cooperation in trade and investment and shared their experience in the fields. French businesses also expressed an interest in Vietnam's potential, especially opportunities from the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement. They also touched on issues relating to logistic and legal procedures and shared the know-how in implementing investment projects in Vietnam. 
écoutez là. There is substantial potential for cooperation between the two sides. We have a large community of Vietnamese people in Marseille and nearby. Our businesses want to invest in Vietnam. Vietnam n'a jamais été aussi. Uh, I have been in Vietnam for 25 years, and we need the strong development of foreign investment in the country. Never before has Vietnam had so many advantages and been so willing to welcome foreign investors. French businesses suggested Vietnam continues investing in high quality infrastructure and human resources to attract more foreign investment. Many French businesses plan to conduct flag fighting tours to Vietnam and attend the Vietnam France Economic Forum in December to seek cooperation opportunities with Vietnamese partners. Works by Vietnamese professor and guitarist Dung Ngoc Long were among the required performances at the International Guitar Competition at Festival Berlin 2022, which wrapped up on October 15. Professor Long has acted as biennial event arts director for nine times. This year's event saw the competition among 15 contestants who are students from professional music schools from 11 countries such as Italy, Germany, Poland and the Republic of Korea. They all were required to perform Long's classical piece of music during the first and second qualifying rounds for the competition. I always want to bring the competition to Vietnam, and I have planned to do it on the occasion of its 20th anniversary. The finale features guitar performances of several Vietnamese folk songs, such as Central Highlands Mountains and Forests, My Darling, Please Don't Leave, and Paddy Chan's Planting, by Professor Dao Ngoc Long and two winners in 2014 and 2020 from Denmark and Belarus. Contestants in the Mid-Sea Island Vietnam 2022 pageant took part in activities to protect the environment on Koto Island in the northern province of Guangning on October 12th and 13th, with a message for a plastic waste-free Koto Island. Together with organizers, contestants planted some 50 arrow carriers surrounding a temple gossiping former President Ho Chi Minh. It's a protect activity aimed at protecting and boosting the image of an island boasting beauty and potential. It also helps raise awareness about the importance of protecting the environment, especially the negative effects of plastic waste. Authorities on Koto hope that activities like this will help enhance awareness about environmental protection and train people's habit of using plastic items. To make Koto become an island free of plastic waste, the local government and people have carried out many programs in recent times, such as Green Sunday and Last Cleanup. Vietnam is among the 20 best places to visit in January, as suggested by UK travel magazine Wanderlust in a recent article. According to the article, Vietnam is a place in the list like its neighbor Laos, is a safe bet in January. The weather is similarly pleasant, dry and sunny, with all its slight differences between the north and south. Crowds have yet to arrive post-Christmas, so you got the chance to experience this uber-popular country in relative peace. You will never get bored of Vietnam's various cities, Hoi An, Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City and Hue, the perfect city for cycling enthusiasts the article said. It said, natural beauty is around every corner in Vietnam too. There's Ha Long Bay and the lesser known Lan Ha Bay, both accessible from Kaba Island and one of the world's biggest caves, Sơn Dong, at the top of the wanderlust list is Norway, followed by Malay, the Maldives, and Los Angeles, the US. And that's the crap up on this bulletin. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.